What, you're telling me you never wanted to have a go? Welcome to Tweed's Garage. Come in, it's freezing out there. Move along, move along. Yeah, come on, there's room for you all. Jenkins, move back. God's sake. Yeah, so uh, welcome to the garage where today big plans afoot, engine to go in. So the, uh, the hoist is built, um, gearbox is in, no more excuses, it's got to go in today. So uh, plan of action as room's a bit tight, gonna lift the engine up on the hoist, off of the workbench, get the workbench out of the way. Uh, in the gearbox, I've got to uh, disconnect the clevis pins on the clutch operating arms and move them aside. And then I um, oh, and take the inspection cover off the top of the uh, bell housing so that when the engine <coughs> comes in, I can move the clutch operating arms back into their position, pin them in place and um, yeah, and uh, bolt it all up. So, uh, well, without further ado, let's get on with it. So to get clearance to get it in without struggling too much um, it is a tight fit in here I think it varies car to car so I have to take front cover off time cover off um, and you can see yeah it has, it's been, been attempted look it's got dings in the front cover where they've uh, tried to take the engine out without removing that and then remove these two studs because they uh, they just catch on the way in so let's remove those just a little tip for those that don't know um, if you haven't got a stud extractor to remove the studs 
nine times out of ten you can normally get them out by putting on two nuts of the same thread size and then once they're on the stud tighten them against each other I have I have checked this one to make sure it comes undone because I'm sort of doing it one-handed so you, tight, you tighten this nut against this nut with two spanners and then you put the spanner on the lower nut and it should nine times out of ten bring the stud out with it sometimes they are really tight and this method won't work but normally it gets you out of a spot especially as my stud extractors are metric so they're no help at all on this So struggling a bit to see what we're doing, so I've taken the uh, clutch operating arm out and and the uh, connection pin for the two uh, operating arms. Just so you can see what's going on. So let's have a look. See, it's a bit dark in there. Hang on, I'll get a torch. So we've got a line. Uh, this pin and there's one lower down they've got a slot in to these rebates on the clutch basket uh, you've got to get the spline in and uh, through the clutch and yeah not a lot to do but we'll keep fiddling away seems to be pulling up okay there's a gap of about one or two mil around the edge but
I think the shaft's definitely gone into the bearing at the end, otherwise it would be a gap of about 10 millimetres all the way around. Seems to be turning over okay. And the click, clicking noise is just the uh, clutch arm resting against the flywheel until we get that into position. Yeah, it seems to turn all right. Happy days. Right, I'll continue to button this up and come back to you later. Just putting a bit of copper slip on and this is a good quality one from Classic Oils. Not sponsored, hashtag. Number two. All in. Seems tight, looks down. That one's not sitting down for some reason. I think a bit of gentle persuasion. There we go. Bit of light fitting. And away. <laughs> Undo my Cub Scout knots. There we go. There we go. Gladstone's got his heart back in him.
back in solidly mounted engine mounts all bolted up um, next job to do is uh, valve clearances need checking so it'll be easier to do it whilst it's sitting in the car um, manifold there's a little for some reason inlet manifolds had a had a screw in it on here i can't think of any reason why uh, if if anybody knows a reason let me know if not i'm going to plug weld it up and uh, be done with that um yeah exhaust manifold on exhaust uh timing cover back on uh new gasket and uh magneto on timing to be done uh radiator to be repaired still but we'll get to that uh take the uh support frame off the bottom of the uh, block and install the sump uh sump's fine this it's uh, got got this filter mesh it's uh, quite fragile now it's had a few cracks in places here where it's obviously been caught on the um scavenging tube um and then around here where the uh, dipstick sort of tube sits in so what i done was a sort of of the period repair um old old bits of biscuit tin cut up pieces of tin cut up folded over and then um and then put in the vice and pressed against the mesh and it just sort of spreads the load around the screws um where they're mounted onto the sump and um it, yeah just tidies up because these were all sort of broken and start it was all the, the mesh was starting to fall into the bottom of the sump so yeah so clean it up gasket back on um and we're getting there i've got to sort you know sort the clutch out uh the uh, clutch withdrawal mechanism get that all correctly set up um or oh, i can connect the front brakes now and get the pedals in their right position so plenty to do um yeah i've never known a, a, an engine design made so difficult to try and be able to turn it over as you're uh, as you're working on it you know it's the same when you when you're trying to time it you know you've got to put start a handle in you know and turn it over that way so you know you sort of lean out the front most cars you've got the the, the um crank pulley um you can normally put a spanner on that and turn that over but because this this has the dynamo on the front um you can't really turn it over because it's a funny funny nut on the front um but there is a tool where's the tool not this tool there's another one so there's this tool that does go on on there. Um, yes, yeah, so that goes in the slot, but you can only do it in certain positions. And the trouble is, all the all the studs get in the way of trying to trying to turn it over. So it's a bit of feel. So you tend to end, it, end up using it like a big screwdriver in the end to uh, turn it round. But anyway, never mind. It's in. So, hope you enjoyed that, watching a man struggle with an engine. Um, it went better than I thought it was going to go. Um, it didn't pop straight in, which I was hoping. Uh, but it also, I didn't have to take it back out again and sort of re realign the clutch plate. Um, once I'd got the gear, the gearbox was at a funny angle. That's why I sort of disappeared off and had to fiddle around, dropped it down with a jack. But where it had been at such an acute angle, it had locked on the ball joint. Um, but yeah, just a sort of a lever bar place between the uh, hand brake bracket and the, and the and the and the brake bracket behind it was enough just to un unrelease it um yeah so once i've got that uh, a more level angle it was easier to slide the engine on uh, the, the difficult bit was the lining that clutch basket up um and then the pins that it slides on and also the the clutch operating arms one of them had dropped down so it was jamming under the under the flywheel but once i got all that out of the way and managed to get the uh, the the, the uh, input shaft for the gearbox lining up once it was on the splines yeah it sort of slotted straight in and the diff thing i thought was going to be really difficult was the uh, getting the end of the shaft in the, in the bearing, but that, that went in no trouble at all. So happy days. Um, what else to do? There's a little list of jobs I said on the engine, do that. Uh, there's the uh, steering box uh, to go back in, 
which is hanging up there. Yeah, that's not a difficult job. It's a box in here and uh, hangs on a bracket under the dashboard. Put the uh, little indicator switch that I've made. I'll show you, you can see that in situ then. Um, yeah, sort clutch breakout, battery tray back in, um, and then and then the floorboards can go back down, and the uh, seats can go back back in there um, where they should be, and it will sort of uh, won't look like a toolbox, then it'll look like a car. Um, what else have we got to do? Um, oh yeah, replace these uh, these sort of uh, bitumen um, insulated aluminium wound fire hazards. Uh, replace these for uh, more uh, modern material. Got some fabric covered. It's nylon fabric covered, but it looks like the old um, cotton covered fabric cables uh, to replace these ones. Um, yeah, and then we're sort of we're sort of getting there, getting there to uh, getting back on the road, which yeah, I'm really looking forward to. So hope you liked the uh, video. Give us a little like if you did, and um, I'll see you next time. Right, it's uh, perishing again. I'm off indoors to get a cup of tea. I'll see you later. Right, I don't know if you're getting all the lemon puffs. Takes me 10 minutes to get to the bloody camera. And I'll get down. Hello? Are you there? Don't leave me up here!